fly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look, it's in a book A reading rainbow Reading Rainbow. Hi, and welcome to Honto Ego, Japan's only 99.9% English podcast hosted at my dinner table. My name is Matt. I'm a Canadian living in Japan. And today's topic, it's a pretty general topic,、um, but I want to talk about the power of reading. Before that, about the intro. Today, I played the intro theme song for the TV show Reading Rainbow. Now, if you're from Canada, if you're from America, you've probably heard that song before if you're over the age of 25.、Um, Reading Rainbow was a TV show broadcast from, I think, 1983 until like 2004 or 5.、Um, It was broadcast by PBS, which is the public broadcasting system. They're like a、uh, government funded educational programming television channel in America, and they broadcast those shows in Canada as well. So, alongside shows like、um, Sesame Street, Reading Rainbow was broadcast for about 20 years. And Reading Rainbow, it's hosted by、um, the actor LeVar Burton from Star Trek, The Next Generation.、Um, And it's all about LeVar Burton talking about reading and the power of reading and encouraging kids to read. Now, it's a really great TV show. And, you know, I think such a great thing to do, right? To encourage children to read. So I just want to give a shout out to Reading Rainbow. You know, thank you, Reading Rainbow. And I also want to plug or promote、uh, LeVar Burton and his new podcast, which is called. LeVar Burton Reads. And LeVar Burton Reads, it's, you know, LeVar Burton, the former host of Reading Rainbow, reading a short story every week, right?、Um, he's got a great reading voice and he has a really good selection of stories that he reads. And he's been doing that for a few years now. So there's many episodes, many types of stories that you can listen to. Anyway, back to the power of reading. Now, if you listen to Honto Ego, maybe you already have an interest in reading, so I don't have to、uh, convince you, right? Maybe you already do read, but maybe you can,、uh, you know, get your friends to read more too, right? So, the power of reading. I think that compared with other hobbies, reading is such a relaxing and beneficial hobby, right? I also enjoy other things, right? I enjoy、um, exercise, which is great, and、uh, watching movies and playing video games. I love playing video games, right? But sometimes I get frustrated by other hobbies, right? The competitive nature of them, I think. I can get overly competitive and I don't like losing, right? Not many people do like losing. But when I'm reading, I feel like no matter when I'm reading or what I'm reading, I'm always benefiting. Right? So, a few things that I gain from reading. Number one, it's very relaxing, right? Maybe it's a weird thing to say, but it's easy to fall asleep while reading for me because it's so relaxing. I'm not a very emotional person,、um, usually, right? So, for me, reading, it's like meditative, right? It's like meditating and it's very relaxing. Um, another benefit of reading is that it forces you to you know, use your imagination. Even if you're reading nonfiction, right? Whether you're reading fiction or nonfiction, you're using your imagination to picture the scenarios that the author is talking about, right? I mean, particularly, I'm a big fan of fantasy and science fiction, and those require a lot of imagination sometimes. Another benefit is that. I'm learning a lot from reading, right? 
I see a lot of adults who read nonfiction, which is great, right? You can learn so much, um, you know, from a well-written book, right? It doesn't have to be a textbook. You can learn, you know, about economies and art and business and psychology and whatever topic, right? You know. Um, but even from fiction, right, I feel like I'm learning a lot, not just about writing and creative writing and English, but also about the subject. Usually an author has to do a lot of research before they write their book. So let's say, for example, there's fiction set in India or fiction set in Canada or what have you. You're learning a lot about, you know, the setting of the story, even in the case of fiction. Or you're learning about the jobs that the characters have. Or you're learning about emotions between people and relationships. So I feel like reading is the most effective way for me to step into the shoes of another person. To think about another perspective on life. Another benefit of reading is that even if you're reading something bad, I feel like you're learning about reading and writing, right? Um, to be honest, if I just read great books all the time, sometimes it makes me feel like I'm not recognizing the greatness as much. Do you know what I mean? So what I mean by that is when you read a bad book, just like if you watch a bad movie, but especially if you read a bad book or a poorly written book and you're able to notice like what's bad about it, that teaches you a lot about good storytelling. If you want to improve um, any skill, it's also a good idea to look at a bad example of that skill. Now, I don't want to, you know, criticize any writers or insult or knock any writers as being bad. You know, everyone has their own unique style of writing, right? But sometimes I, I see a style that I don't jive with, right? A style that I don't really like, I can't connect with. And that teaches me a lot about, okay, how do I want to write? What style do I want my writing to be in? And also, what types of books do I enjoy reading instead of this one? So basically, to summarize, I feel like reading is obviously very educational, even if it's fiction or nonfiction, and it's very relaxing, and it, you know, it takes a lot of patience, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes a book is a little bit dry or a little bit boring, and it requires patience to sit down or to stand and focus on the book, right? We have so many easy, convenient distractions in our life, right? We get that itch, that urge to look at our phone and to look at social media. But the act of like forcing yourself to focus on the book, I think that's really important, especially for young people where their brains are developing and they're getting easily distracted, they're looking left and right, like, what can I do? What can I do? Where's the fun? Where's the fun? It's good to have to dig for the fun, right? Or to dig for the benefits. Reading doesn't always give you the benefit right away. You have to earn the benefit within the reading. So I wanted to share a little story that happened to me recently. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not a very emotional person, um, and reading or watching movies or whatever, they don't really make me very emotional. In fact, I feel jealous of people who can cry easily during movies or can cry when a character they like dies in a book. I wish I could feel that. But I did have a very emotional experience just last week. So in the daytime, <laughs> Uh, I am a teacher. I, I teach at an international school in Tokyo, and I teach all kinds of uh, students from around the world that now live in Tokyo, but I teach them in native fluent English, right? So last week I was reading with a group of 17 or 18 year old students from high school, and we were reading a short story called War by the Italian writer named... Luigi Pirandello. That's right. I was reading War by Luigi Pirandello, and that was written in 1918, so over a hundred years ago, translated from Italian. And of course, before the lesson, I had read this, the story, right? It's like a three-page short story. 
I read the story and I enjoyed it. You know, I thought, oh, that's pretty good, pretty beautiful, right? It's a story about um, Italian parents riding a train to Rome and they're going to say goodbye or to say hello to their sons who they sent off to fight in World War I, right? And they're talking about how proud they are of their sons and how uh, their sons, you know, they're so brave and wonderful for fighting for their country, you know, and it's more important to be an Italian than it is to be a son or a father, right? You know, being a citizen of your country comes first, they say. Um, and there's one character in the story who his son has already died in the war, right? And he says, I'm not even sad about it, right? In fact, I'm happy. I'm happy that my son died for his country, right? And the act of talking about it causes the father to suddenly realize that his son is really gone, right? He's truly dead. And it causes the father to break down crying. And for the first time, he, he mourns his son. He, he is sad and grieving for the loss of his son. So reading it to myself, you know, it was a good story. I really enjoyed it. But then reading it out loud with my students, um, you know, and my students being the age of the, the soldiers in the story, probably, right, 18 years old, old enough to fight in a war, um, while reading out loud to my class, I suddenly began crying. <laughs> um, pretty embarrassing experience, right? Just crying in front of your students, a little bit awkward, but it, I couldn't help myself. It just came on so suddenly. And I've never cried from reading, right? But the act of reading out loud and sharing that experience and talking about that experience with my students, that was a really emotionally overwhelming moment for me. Um, but it made me enjoy the story all the more, right? I realized like, wow, this is actually a great short story. So I'd like to add that the act of reading out loud and the act of sharing a story is also really powerful in its own right. That's why, you know, Reading Rainbow is such a great TV show. You know, it's encouraging parents to read to their children as well as encouraging children to read by themselves. Oh, by the way, um, I still remember the exact sentence that made me cry from that story. Um, <laughs> it has kind of burned itself into my brain. One of the characters said... Um, about his son and about all of their sons, he said, we belong to our children, but they don't belong to us. Yeah, that really hit me hard. Um, and then from then on, it just got more and more emotional. But anyway, um, yeah, that's War by Luigi Pirandello. Great writer. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about today um, it's a, another quote, this time from Reading Rainbow, actually. I remember in one episode of Reading Rainbow, LeVar Burton, the host, he said, um, a book lets you zoom through time and space, but don't bother packing, you can stay in one place. <laughs> and, you know, that's a really cute way to imagine. But, um, right, the, the transformative nature of a book or rather, the escapist nature of a book, right? Escapism is the idea of, you know, being able to escape into a hobby, and your hobby or your interest can transport you to another place, right? So when you read a book, you feel like you're entering that world, right? And for a moment or for a while, you're able to escape reality. And depending on, you know, your situation, on where you live and on, you know, the people around you. Some of us do need that sometimes, right? Some of us need to escape reality. I grew up in a small town and um, I felt, you know, a little bit different from other people at times. But for me, it was always really, really safe to be able to read a book and to escape into that book. That's why I gravitated towards fantasy and science fiction, right? Those are really... Um, great escapist genres, right? And I felt like, okay, um, I'm not really 
happy with where I am right now or I'm kind of bored or whatever, but at least I can I can jump into the world of Lord of the Rings or Star Wars or whatever for a time, right? Um, so I know that for some people it's it's quick and it's convenient to, you know, escape into your phone, right? And I don't want to sound like an old man here. I don't want to be your grandpa yelling at you. But I truly think that, you know, escape is not always great, but I think that escaping into a book is a healthier way of escaping than it is escaping into social media. We always talk about the social media rabbit hole, right? Which is an expression that comes from Alice in Wonderland. You fall into the rabbit hole and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Where does it go, right? And social media and a lot of the internet is like a rabbit hole. You start scrolling through TikTok or watching a YouTube video and hours go by and you realize, oh, where am I? Like, how did I get here on this video, right? That's maybe not great for our brain. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a psychologist, but as a teacher, I think that escaping into a book is much healthier for you because you have to use your brain uh, consistently. You have to continue to imagine the world of the book and you have to continue to focus and pay attention on the book. Um, I think that's a healthier way of escaping. Okay, well, that's it for today's uh, episode on the power of reading. I mean, I, I try to talk about the power of reading in all my episodes pretty much, right? <laughs> But as always, please follow me on Instagram at Honto Ego Pod, H O N T O E I G O P O D, Honto Ego Pod. And if you have any questions or comments, um, you can leave a comment on YouTube, you can uh, leave a comment on the Instagram, you can send me an email at Honto Ego at gmail.com. Anyway, thank you for listening and. Take a look, it's in a book, Reading Rainbow, Reading Rainbow.